introduce yourself to the world, please. I am, okay, um, I'm Walter P.O.P. Matthews IV, and I'm a producer, writer, composer, and a whole bunch of other things, but that's the, that's the main thing. Hey, what's up, y'all? How y'all feeling? <laughs> so? so how did you get started doing what you're doing? <clears throat> How did I get started? Like, oh man, um, which part? Because you know I do like a million different things. So. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Pick one. <laughs> well, I've uh, I've been a writer since elementary school. I used to um, I used to uh, make uh, what I I call them pocket comic books, and I'm um, all of the all of the the, uh, the cartoon, the, the, the afternoon cartoons that used to be on, like in the 80s, um, you know, I would draw them and create my own stories to them. And I never knew I had a gift to writing. You know, I would uh, do well on all of the um, the writer's tests and everything. And, um, but yeah, I would, I would write original stories to um, uh, cartoons that were already on TV. And, you know, then eventually I got into hip hop, you know, um, you know, LL was the first um, um, rapper that, that really captivated me. Like um, his lyricism was just on another level. And, you know, the big words that he would use would uh, really, that, that really did captivate me. So um, that's how I started into writing and uh, music. The first time I saw Michael Jackson, that was it for me. That, that was Motown 25. That that's when um that's that was my musical Big Bang. When I saw Michael Jackson, it was a rap. That was it. You know. But so, beautiful by the way. No, no, that's cool. I think I think that's so cool that you did little cartoons in elementary. Well, we wrote you wrote stories for for yeah, cartoons I wrote, in elementary school. I wrote original stories. That, 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 hi, I think that's, hi, everybody. I think. <laughs> hey, guys. I see a couple people popping in and out. Hello, hello. <clears throat> so what shifted that you thought that I need to take this seriously as a career? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think the thing that shifted was, uh, for one, um, I knew it was something um, – I knew it was something bigger and better for me, you know. Um, you know, after a while, like uh, all the jobs that I would work with, uh, I don't know, the, the jobs just seemed mundane. You know, it never felt like uh, it never felt like I fit in at the jobs. You know, I would even have um, one of the jobs that I worked. You know, uh, it, it was <laughs> it, you know, it was so just basic and not me. I had the administrator of the whole place like come to me and was like, oh, uh, do you do anything else? It's like something about you. Like, what else do you do? She were, she was fishing for other things that I did. And, and the job was very entry level. And she was, you know, she was fishing for other things that I did. And, um, you know, long story short is, you know, our conversations led to a promotion you know, because I also have a background in art. It Everything started with I'm um, writing in art. And my background, when I told her that, I, well, I went to school for commercial art and I went to school for art. Um, when I told her that, um, it, 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 was a, uh, it was a senior facility that I worked at. And um, when I told her that, that led to a promotion. I started, um, I started, uh, on my free time paying for, for the seniors and that that led to um, a promotion. Yeah, that, that, that led to um, a promotion out of the, the position that I was in. And so I you know I think it was a assistant activity director or something like that. But um, just somebody seeing something in me elevated me to doing I mean and when I worked with the seniors, I was doing things that I was talented in, art, you know, music, all of that. So, you know, it's amazing when somebody, like, sees something in you 
You know, that, that's, I, I'll never forget that story, you know, because that, that, that was one of the things that lit the spark in me as a, a creative doing it as a career. I hope that wasn't too long-winded. No, no, I love it. No, <laughs> long-winded. That, that, yeah. was, that was a really nice story. I love that. I, I'm probably right about job? that story. <laughs> what, what, what was the worst job that you've ever had? Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm in the health field, right? You know, um, mm -hmm. but, but the worst job I had was, um, was, a uh, what's the worst? Uh, you know what? Like, I, I think the worst job, you know, have some background in um, warehouse work, that, that probably, that would probably would, I, I worked as a forklift operator, and, um, you know, um, that job was very oppressive. Like the whole environment was uh, very oppressive. You know, he's like, you know, <laughs> we would take breaks and the supervisors and managers would peek in and like, thinking like, hey, you know, can't we, we have a 15 minute break and we enjoy our break without you like, you know, popping in and, you know, like hounding us and, you know, so, like that job was, um, <laughs> I think I was there like two months. That was a very oppressive job. And that job, I remember, uh, I, I knew it was something else for me. Um, you know, I worked along with another um, guy that was just as new as I was. And um, I don't know, it seemed like he, you know, he, he was scared of the managers or whatever. Uh, I remember one time, um, we, you know, we, him and I were, you know, we were training, we were doing our job that the supervisors like came by, you know, he was like, uh, put your game face on. I'm like, what? Like, put your game face on. So, I mean, I have a deeper story about that, but you know, that's, that's too, uh, you know, that, that may be too deep for this live right now, but like, he pretty much told me, put my game face on, like, you know, like we were slaves or something. And I, and I knew at that moment, I'm like, I'm telling you, man, this is not for me. Something bigger and better for me, you know. So it is. So as 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 a um, um composer slash producer, how long does it take you to make the perfect song? Because I know nothing's ever perfect, but you know, forgive me for phrasing. Um, how long? It, um, when it comes to that, I'm very technical and I'm a perfectionist, so. It can take me, you know, to, you know, when when I get it right, when I when I feel that it's right up, I'll mix I'll mix a song about a hundred times, you know, and, and so I feel like it's right, you know, I, and I basically what I do is um um I create a song. Sometimes I have to create a song like um in its rough its roughest form, and uh and come back to it the next day with fresh ears. That's what I learned from being in the producer community. You know, uh, you, you create, um, you know, mix it, uh, and, and do all that, and, and come back the next day with fresh ears. And I honestly, I do that same thing with writing. You know, I, I just wrote, like, my, uh, another article. I, I just wrote it, and probably today or tomorrow I'm going to edit it. So, um you know, writing and uh, composing, I approach them pretty much the same way, you know, a, a very technical way. But, um, you know, uh, I do things, you know, over and over like a perfectionist. And, you know, it could take me weeks to, to finish, you know, uh, one piece, you know, one composition, one article, you know, even the, the, the photos that I take, you, you know, like that. I take a lot of different angles and, you know, pick the best one, you know, so. So, so yeah, on, on your page, you, you do post a lot of photos. Do you have a professional camera? No. Oh, it's off no. of your phone? Yeah. How cool yeah. is that? No, because I like, because they're really pretty. Like, you, you take a lot of sunset photos. Yeah. And it's like, like, that's really cool that you do just from your phone. Yeah, it's just, just, just from the phone, you know, it's, it's uh, really a hobby, a hobby that, you know, that turned into something I, I did more. And eventually, you know, I'd be planning on getting, um, um, you know, more expensive camera, you know, 
because it's, it's some um some shots that I want that a phone can't capture. Some some real big shots that I want. You know, like like the moon. You know, mm-hmm. you know I want I want, some, I want better moon shots. But it, it all started as a hobby. You know, you know, art is art to me. You know, you know, I'm. Um, you know, I I, I knew. <laughs> sorry, you know, I, I do a lot of different kinds of art, whether it's photography, whether it's writing, music. It's you know, I have the same approach to a lot of other things that I do. So awesome. Awesome, awesome. So um, this is something that is new to me, and hopefully maybe someone who's watching this, you can explain it to them. The okay. the rules of licensing and copywriting as a mu- musician. Could you explain that to, some, to, to us? The rules to copyright? Okay. Um, well, uh, your, your music. Well, well, the first thing... Um, you know, the first thing you want to do is, um, you know, copyright your music. Um, uh, and how, you know, how, uh, how does one do that? Like, how does one go about getting their music copywritten? Well, the Library of Congress, you know, you can go to, to um, the, the Library of Congress.com. But, you know, a, a lot of these um, distribution distribution sites like uh, um, the one of the most popular ones, uh, DistroKid, um, uh, a lot of them, you know, a lot of them, uh, they uh, they automatically copyright stuff. But if you want to do it separate, uh, you know, just, uh, go to the Library of Congress site. And um, as far as uh, publishing, you know, I'm I'm with BMI right now. You know, go to BMI.com and you can um, you, you can register. You know, each track with BMI. BMI.com. BMI.com? Yeah. That, that, that's, how, how important do you think it is for musicians? Because you see a lot of musicians putting out their music on Instagram, on, on YouTube, and then, like, they, people can easily just, I mean, I know I do, <laughs> people can just easily mm-hmm. download them and steal them. How important do you think it is that they do do this process? Very important. Very important. Very important to, um, you know, copyright, copyright all your work, you know. You know, um, because uh, you know the, the internet is like the wild, wild west these days. It's like mm-hmm. that's why I, I notice a lot of um, um, in the producer community, a lot of producers that put their um, that put their music on YouTube. Um, they use uh, what you call producer tags. That's when you hear the producer name throughout the song. You know, like you know, like I'm P.O.P. You know, like like you know, every couple bars is P.O.P. 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 You know, you know, my my voice tag will go out through the song, so nobody won't you know, rip off somebody's song. You know, what? Jeez, I didn't even know about that. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot that I learned. I've been um, I've been a producer for uh, uh since officially. 06 because 06 was you know 06 was the first album that I produced you know and, and my first album actually was um, um, Christian hip hop when it wasn't even popular you know I, you know, I, I produced a, a Christian hip hop album when you know nobody people was wondering what that even was you know it was like, <laughs> they, they, I mean it, it's a lot more popular now but when I did it it was you know, it was really different. So, but yeah, 06, uh, you know, 06 was my, um, you know, debut year as a producer. And um, then I, I, I wrote my first and only book, uh, The Blood of My Pen in 04. So. So you've been doing this for a while. Yeah. You can give, like, so much advice. Okay, another yeah. piece, another, um, so... <clears throat> Can you explain how equity works in the music business? Because I know that, and this is going to sound like such an immature example, but like bear with me. <laughs> I know that the actor who sang the voice of Simba in The mm-hmm. Lion King, he gets yeah. paid in equity still to this day. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's cool, but like, what is that? <laughs> that's a royalty. Royalty. Okay, so the word it's I'm looking royalty. for is royalty. royalty. Okay, royalty. can you explain royalties to us? 
Uh, what we'll see is like a, um, they call it like a back end. Uh, I'll give you an example of, um, I'll give you an example of, of, of a royalty, uh, you know, that, um, that I'm set up to get. Um, I have about, a about 50, uh, about 50, like, uh, tracks registered and floating around, uh, to be placed on TV. Um, when they get placed on TV, um, I get a royalty and, and that the royalty has to do with, uh, how many, how many times the song get played, like on that show, you know, on you know re, a reality show like Love It Hip Hop or you know um, Housewives or this or that, Atlanta, you know, any reality show where what you know whatever show uh, picks up, you know, so that so and, and the royalties, the way that they work is, uh, um, I know the way DMI works, you get paid uh, quarterly. You know, and so it's probably the same thing with um, I forgot his name, um, but I, I know I know the guy you're talking about who uh, who voiced um, Simba yeah, the, from, the, from the original from the original Lion King. He he also played um, he also played Michael Jackson in in the yes. '90s. Yeah, I, I just can't remember his name right now. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, and um, it. People who have syndicated TV shows, they also get royalties, like uh, say, like the Cosby Show. You know, um, you know, once a show gets syndicated, um, everybody that was in it, like the actors, get a royalty. Like so, um, actors from the Cosby Show, you know, if that you know, they still play it anywhere, actors from the Cosby Show, they sh they still get royalties because the show was syndicated. You know, I think, and I believe, once a show. Uh, gets to the syndication level, that's when everybody gets royalties. You know, so like the music pretty much works the same. I know with me, with my music, when it gets picked up for um, any shows, I'll get royalties uh, quarterly. So that's how, it how, how does how does one go about getting their their tracks to to be on a show? Is there a certain website they should they can go to, or a uh, certain agency they can sign with? Um, uh, it's a lot of them. Um, it, it's, a uh, it's a lot of research that I had to do to, you know, I, I would do your research, Google, Google, um, Google sync licensing. And there's a, it, there's a lot of, cause it's, it's a lot of resources. So I, you know, I would do, um, do your due diligence and sync, um, Google, Google sync licensing. And, um, it's a lot of stuff when you like, Google Sync License and Google, you know, just be direct. Uh, Google how to get my tracks on TV and Sync License. Yeah. And uh, there's it, it, a lot of stuff that, that have come up, you know. You know, I, I've, I've done a lot of research over, like, the last five years. There's it's, it's a lot of stuff out there and a lot of stuff that I can help people with, you know. You know anybody needs some help, just, you know, just DM me. I'll give you some resources. I'll lead you the right way. And he's and he's very friendly, guys. And he replies really fast because I I follow a lot of um rappers. Ironically, I don't know why, <laughs> but um I'm like I'm I'm always a little worried wary when they put their music out there because I'm like someone's gonna try and steal it and claim it as their own, you know? Because you yeah. know, like you said, it's a it's a doggy dog world. I keep it simple and direct. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Why aren't you I, in Hollywood right now? That's a that's a good question, but uh, I will I will be, I will be. You, you for sure will be. Don't yeah, forget about me. Just send me oh. five dollars when you get there. <laughs> Good morning, man. Let me just sleep on I'm your couch. Forget. I'll figure it out after that. <laughs> yeah. um, so we, we're talking so much about music, but you're also a writer, phenomenal writer. You post. Um, Thank you. Your writings, I would say, pretty much every day, right? Like you don't really um, take it to uh, Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I do. Um, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I post quotes to uh, to, to Instagram and. Uh, but Facebook, they're your original uh, quotes, though. Like they're not copied quotes. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh you know um, I like writing spontaneously. Now um you know like with. 
now that I'm doing articles, and you know, you, you can ask me more about that, but now that I'm doing articles, I spend more time on those because they actually get published you know, and I'm seen by a wider like, like audience. So, you know, I, you know, I take a, a lot more um, time and thought into um, uh, writing those. Like, I write my articles like I would write and edit a book. Uh -huh. Can you tell us about the process of getting a book published? Uh, well, you know, when um, <laughs> something, um, <laughs> when uh, when I got my book published, self-published in '04, a, a lot of things were different. Like back then, you, you know, I published. Uh, I actually published my book and published the ebook before. I don't even think it was a Kindle yet. It, it wasn't even a Kindle to tablet yet. Um, I published my book online at a time where. Um, Everybody wanted books, like they they wanted them signed in hand. Like they would look at me like I was crazy when I I, I said, "Oh, my book is so and so dot com." Like, no, nah, yeah, I want it in hand. This this is O four. Like I said, tablets weren't out. You know, I had an ebook before tablets were out. So I, I wanted to say that again. Uh, you know, it's so like I literally <laughs> uh, I, I literally had an ebook out before tablets. And I had my book online when people were still scared to buy things online. You know, nobody wanted to buy anything online in 04. So I had to buy all of my books in bulk and, you know, have, I guess, little book signings or whatever. But um, um, it's, it's time for, uh, I write some more because I still have some promotion of that when they do. You know that that book, uh, the blood of my pen, is like a, a poetic autobiography, a poetic autobiography. So I'm still promoting all these years. Well, I don't know how many years that is, 04, 16 years. I'm still promoting that book. I need to write some more. I'd love to read it. Yeah, I gotta get it to you. Yeah, definitely um, gotta get it to you. So, would you recommend to writers now just sticking electronic? Don't don't make a uh, paper. Paper books. Paperback, right? Paperback. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, do, do, do both because you know, do both. People still like both. You, you know, a lot of websites. Uh, you know, um, you know, when I do my next like books, I'm going to look for like another publisher. I mean, I'm like the one that's on now is called Lulu. Um, and, and, you know, and I may go back with them, you know, but, it, 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 you know, um, when I published my, my first book, it, there were, weren't many self-publishers. There weren't many self-publishers out there that, um, that um, did print-on-demand. Print-on-demand is, you know, that's what I was really looking for because um, I could order my books in, in bulk and then, you know, sell them wherever I went. Um, but, uh um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> how how does how does one like get a book signing? Do you just call a bookstore and be like, "Hey, I'm a writer. I would like to set up a tent outside." How does that work? Well, to be honest with you, um, when I did book signings, it it, it, it wasn't uh, like major book signings. It, it was like uh, I would set things up with family. I, you know. I, I ne yeah, it, it, it was more of a, a family like thing. I, I never got a chance to do like a, a real book signing like at Barnes and Nobles or something like that. You know, I, you know, prayerfully one day like I will, but it, it was more of um family and friends because really uh, when I when I published my first book, right after that, you know, I got into music heavy. You know, like so. You know, having a book at the time was just, you know, uh, something that set me apart because at, at the time that I published my book, I was with a, a local, a, a Baltimore local label, and I was heavy into that at the time. So really, I mean, I, I was uh, I was with a local label, uh, <clears throat> a, a, lo a local record label, 
And everybody, everybody there was so talented. You know, it, it made me step my game up as an artist because you know I do have I do have one um, hip hop album as an artist, but uh, this label that I was at, it was it was so many talented singers and rappers. It's like you had no choice but to step your game up. So, um, you know, when I published that book, you know, um, that was uh, that was the thing that set me apart, everybody, because you know, as a rapper at the time. I mean, they were heavyweights. I was the low man on the totem pole at that time. So, like, the book, you know, when, when I published the book, you know, nobody knew anybody, like, from the neighborhood that had their own book. That was, you know, publishing a book was was different and it was, like, such a big accomplishment for, like, my circle. You know, you know everybody had, you know, uh, Everybody rapped. Everybody had a CD, you know. Uh -huh. and, uh, but uh, publishing the book was uh, that really set me apart. And um, and one of the origins of how I got the name P.O.P. You know, if you're curious about like that name. <laughs> so, do you have any advice for writers, composers? musicians in general for how to take your take your career to the next level like as like you have well uh it takes a lot of discipline mm. uh takes a lot of discipline takes a lot of faith takes a lot of belief in yourself you know um, you know there are some days that you're not going to feel like you're not gonna feel like doing, especially. You're not gonna feel like doing, especially if you still have a full time job. You know, a lot of times when you have a full time job, it's like you know when you get off, it's like you know you're ready to just to watch Netflix, ready to kick back, and it's not a lot of energy. I have to really push myself to do this. Uh, you know, on my off days, so. Uh, you have to you have to do your craft when you don't feel like it. You know, get you can get out of the mindset of thinking that you know you're going to work on something. You know, when you when you're always rested, when you always feel like doing it. The thing that step the thing that's going to separate you is doing things that's uncomfortable. Doing it when you don't feel like doing it. You know. And I've been doing that a lot more, you know, um, um, almost like tricking my mind, you know, a day that is supposed to be my relaxed day. You know what? I'm switch it up. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to turn this computer on and I'm going to work on something. So, uh, you know, be diligent, be disciplined, uh, believe in yourself and find something, um, you know, find something that you're passionate about, you know. Um, if think about the thing that, that you do that you, you would do it without any uh, money you know think about that you know like you know, something that is fun to do uh, that uh, you're not thinking about like your career or money or something you know, that, that's actually uh, uh, my brand Q to Score you know when I created Q to Score um, that you know that that's my um, Q to score is my my uh, my composer hat. When I created Q to score, that just came from pure love because um, uh, when I was young, um, you know when I was young, when I was young, my mother would take me to, to movies, and I always would love the movie soundtrack. Like I think the first one was Superman, Superman the movie, and um, I fell in love with the but the original scores. So, you know, I started doing it myself and uh, just as a hobby and it, and, and it, turned into some, it turned into something bigger, you know? So um, I hope that answered your question. No, it does. It does. Yeah. It does. I'm so happy that I know you. Oh, that's, that's, that's so kind. Thank you. I, I, Thank I, you. I, I sincerely am. Well, we go back 
literally since I first started vlogging. And this is our first time meeting each other in person. I, I just thought yeah. about that. That's so awesome. Well, I guess not yeah. in person. You know what I'm saying, though? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the first time that we, you know, we've talked. You know? Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah, I'm so but, happy that I know you. Same here. Same okay, here. So where can people find you, follow you, stalk you, all that fun stuff? Well, you can stalk me, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, you know, and, and, and um, you, uh, you mess with me about this life sometimes, uh, like how many accounts I have, but uh, I have a couple accounts, you know. A couple. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, you know P.O.P. the producer, P.O.P. the writer, Q to score, you know, they're, they're, they're the main ones. P.O.P. the producer, um, P.O.P. the writer. And, you know, that 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 mean to. And then I then I have a photograph a photography one of Zen Zen is within and uh, what else I and then the main ones. Just you can look up POP the producer at POP the producer at POP the writer. The one I'm on right now. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for this. This was so oh, thank I, you. I think this was very very, very educational. Which, yeah. which you know, I, I can like that though. Like I, 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 I am always down to have like a fun, like, silly time. But also at the end of the day, like I want to make sure that we're educating one another. So yeah, and I want to want to let let everybody know that doing this was is way out of my comfort zone. This is this is my first live ever. First and, of many. Uh, yeah, first first of many. Uh, this this was the this was the one. This was the first one. Yeah, and I I jumped out there, stepped out of, you know, I'm, I'm terrified to, to hear the playback of it. You know, but, <laughs> It'll be great. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> because I, I, you know, if I, I play it back, I know I'm going to want to edit and, and produce it and remix it. Ooh, okay. Well, do you mind sending me that version too? <laughs> and I'll obviously uh, share it and stuff, all that fun stuff. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> Clark's mission. Thank you so much. Nikki's so awesome. <laughs> okay. All right. So let me, let me go put some clothes on before I go to work. <laughs> oh, you got to go to work. Yeah. Yeah. No cool. days off. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah. so, so, so much for this. This was. Oh, thank you. Ah, I'm so glad I woke up early for this. Oh, uh, this is definitely it's my pleasure. All right. I'll talk to you later. Okay. All right.